Hello, everyone. This is Amy Lee, the Productive Mama. And today I am going to address some of the big myths I hear about freezer meal clubs. Um, because I do hear some objections. I know it's hard for me to believe that people would have objections, but I do hear some. And here are um, six of the ones that I hear pretty frequently in my answers to them. So number one, um, I have picky eaters, so I can't do a freezer meal club. Um, and I hear this pretty frequently. Um, but what I also hear is that most moms are frustrated with picky eaters. So uh, most moms aren't really thrilled about that, wish they could change that, wonder what they can do about that. Um, so I think that exposure to new meals can help. This can be a really uh, gentle way to stretch your the taste bud in your family um, and get them exposed to a few new things. So uh, and what I always have told my kids is, this might not be, but tomorrow we might have something you like a lot. Um, it is not your job to provide your kids everybody's favorite meal every single night. That's probably impossible if you have more than one other person that you are feeding. So there should not be that expectation that you're going to do that. Um, so that's sort of my way to address that, that um, it might be good to stretch your kids a little bit and expose them to some new things. And it wouldn't be, you know, some sort of all of a sudden now you're only getting these meals. It would be, you know, with freezer meals, you're having one every other night, a few a week, whatever might be working for you and your club. Um, so the next night you can make something that, you know, everybody likes. Um, a freezer meal that isn't an absolute hit with everyone. But say you've just given up, you have um, surrendered to the fact that you have picky eaters, or maybe you are the picky eater. Um, in that case, you can still be in a freezer meal club. You might want to start your own club where you can set some of the guidelines. You can uh, make it clear what foods are okay and what foods aren't. Or you can even, some clubs have um, a specific set repertoire of recipes. So they have, here are the rep, uh, recipes that we make in our club. And you kind of rotate through those. Different clubs do it different ways. Some are assigned, sometimes it's left to chance within this set uh, repertoire. Um, and I'll go into more details about this in my Freezer Meal Club book and course. That would be chapter 12, which is lesson 12. Um, in the course. So if this is a concern for you, go ahead and check that out. Okay, myth number two, uh, we have food allergies in our family, so we cannot do um, a freezer meal club. Um, in this case, you would probably need to uh, start your own club, not necessarily by yourself, maybe with a few others. If you have a severe food allergy, you might have a support group um, that you can go to to do this. You might also have a set of friends that have been um, accommodating when you get together with them, your food allergy, and they might be good to work with. And again, you would set the guidelines um, of how food is prepared and what foods are uh, in your club. Um, so that is how you can uh, still benefit and participate in a freezer meal club. Oh, and also if you do have a severe food allergy, uh, I know it's very likely that you have to cook every single meal all the time. You have to be very vigilant uh, about what uh, child, if it's your child that has the allergy, eats. And so this would then free you up a little bit. It would allow you um, to do a little bit less cooking if you had a freezer meal club. Okay, myth three, my friends aren't interested. Well, everyone wants to save time and money. Most people I know are interested in that. Maybe they just want to save time, just want to save money. Maybe they want to save save both. Um, and they may not be aware of all the benefits of a freezer meal club. So make it easy for them. Bullet point the benefits. Show how much money you can save. Show how much time you can save. Um, make it easy for them to see that um, to generate some interest. Now, you know, it's also a numbers game. 
you might need to ask 10 people five to participate um, after showing them this nice uh, list of benefits. Uh, if you uh, have signed up for my Freeze Your Meal Club course, there is already uh, created for you a lovely list of benefits. I think I call it something like the benefits one, one pager or something like that, that you can easily print uh, fill in your information to hand out if you're if you're actively trying to uh, get together a club or just email it out to people. Um, and it's uh, already done for you. You can just show them here all the benefits. Uh, uh, myth number four, you need to cook. I need to cook all day. I don't have all day to cook. Uh, no, absolutely not. Need to. There is an option. There are some groups that choose to get together and spend a nice chunk of time cooking together for, for some very good reasons, but that's only one option. And I show you several other ways that you can do a freezer meal club and organize one um, that actually don't involve an all day cooking session. Um, let's see. So I spend about an hour making 12 meals or so when I do it. Sometimes less if I have a soup. I have a few super easy recipes. Uh, sorry, my list just fell. Super easy recipes that can take a little shorter, and then I have some that are a little more involved, but totally worth it. So it depends on how my month is going, how my day is going, what I'm going to make, what's on sale. That's a big determining factor. Um, but it does not take all day at all. Like I said, an hour. Um, that's it. Myth number five, I don't have a big freezer, so I can't do this. Uh, half of our club about manages with a regular freezer, you know, the top, bottom, on the side, the typical one right next to your refrigerator. Um, we have found, we usually aim for about 12 meals, and we have found that that is what can be managed by most people who have a regular freezer. So we actually kind of work on the assumption that people do not have a freezer. Um, your approach to making, preparing, making, and storing your freezer meals might be a little different than mine since I do have a big freezer. And uh, in the freezer meal course, I go into some of the details about how you might want to approach things, um, some other tools you can use, some strategies you can use, um, to manage with a uh, regular size freezer. And myth number six, the no good. I know freezer meals have this reputation as, I don't know, bags of mushiness or something. I don't know. We have foodies in our group um, for sure. So this, I just don't find to be true are no good. Um, some of our recipes, so we have gumbo a lot. And yeah, that is a uh, dump it all together and cook it together kind of meal. Um, still, it's really good. Um, you know, lots of, lots of vegetables, really good for you. Uh, mango chicken, so delicious. Zuppa Toscana, that one uses lots of fresh ingredients. Um, oh, this last time we had a new recipe, my last time, but two days ago, I made this chicken and creamy mushroom sauce. It's actually a paleo recipe. Really delicious, a big hit. And that was done in the cast iron skillet. So um, super easy, just fried it up, cooked it in the sauce for a little bit um, because it was a freezer meal and so much of it was already prepped. Very easy to do. Um, oh, pumpkin curry. That one's really yummy. Um, blue cheeseburgers. That's another one I like. Um, you get more variety with the club than doing this on your own. So if you think that the meals are boring or not any good, that can be the case sometimes. I mean, I'm a big fan of freezer meals. If you're doing them on your own, fantastic. Keep doing them. Um, if, uh, but you're off, what you're doing then is often making several of one type of meal and then you have five of those type of meal in your freezer. So then you're going to be eating through those in the next two months or so with freezer meal clubs, you get all kinds of different, you get things that you might not necessarily make, or you wouldn't figure out how to do on 
the power of the group group um, gives you some amazing stuff that then you can then take into your own repertoire and have these meals on your own. Uh, okay, so those are my top six myths debunked um, about freezer meals. And I hope that has helped you. If you've been on the fence, if you've thought, I, I just can't do freezer meals, um, now maybe you'll consider them. Okay, I'm going to see if I can go to Facebook and see if there are any comments. I don't think I'm going to be able to. What is this? Yes, view my dashboard. Let's see if I can see that. And we'll see if anyone has any questions. And again, you can click on um, the link here to learn more about my course, to uh, get on my mailing list. And of course, you also just, just or email me if you're already on the list. If there are any questions um, that you have about freezer meals or anything else, I'm really happy to answer. Like I know everybody says that, but seriously, if you ask me a question about freezer meal clubs, I would be so happy to answer them. Oh no, sorry, Melissa says my audio is cutting in and out. I'm having that problem with this program, I think. I'm struggling with that. Sorry, I hope you can understand. Here's my slow blink about that. And hi, Carrie, thanks for coming on. Okay, guys, I hope you could hear me pretty well. Thanks for tuning in. And